out your Bibles today. Fear now, thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Verse 13, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. Saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Verse 14, fear not, thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel, I will help thee. Something in America has been invented and most of all North America, of course, and the Philippines. They use something called a helpline. It's called 911. I wonder this crowd, balconies, lower floor, how many, myself included, my hands going up, how many have ever used 911? Would you lift your hand? 911, many of you, hundreds and hundreds, you may put them down. 911 is a help line. The word help in the Bible is just to come alongside and to aid. So we're calling someone, will you come and help us? <clears throat> it's the word to support. Will you come and, and do your best to uh, support? It's the word protect. And so when I call 911, I'm asking for aid. I'm asking for support. I'm asking for help. Uh, I'm asking for intervention. I'm asking that someone will, will take care of the need with me. You know, I, I have a hard time with the people that want to def defund the police. Same ones generally have fortresses around their house. A lot of these government officials, and they have their own guards. But the first thing they do when they have trouble, they'll say, 911! You know, we ought to do something here for those dear people, whether they be pastors or politicians or Americans. If you want to defund the police, let's get a register of all the people that don't want the police. Let's put you on that so when you call us, we don't have to go. Let's try that one more time so those people don't have to endanger themselves and go help you. That's right. I like that helpline. Right before pastor's conference a few years ago, I was casually, I don't ride a bicycle for exercise. I ride it just to casually get up on the, on the uh, levee up here that goes to the salt flats and I use it for a prayer place. And I pray and I sing and I shout and nobody hears me, especially the further you get out in the salt flats. Now, I was flying in after preaching out of town on Thursday night and flying in Thursday, Friday morning early. And I looked down, I saw those salt flats and, and they're so, it's amazing. Thing. You can shout. I can sing and nobody can turn it off. I could have the best time. And I'd gone out there to pray and I was coming back and I said, you know what? I need to order something. And so I'm riding my bicycle and I'm on my cell phone and I'm going down a dirt hill. That's a case of the stupids. And I had my hand on the front brake uh, instead of the back brake. And I got wobbly and I hit that brake and that back wheel came up and I went flying over the handlebars and sure enough, there was one piece of concrete and my head hit it. Well, I'm telling you something, head wounds, you know how they are, they bleed all over America. They're the worst. And uh, so I broke some ribs, two ribs, and I, and I smashed my face up, but I still look good. <laughs> that hurt right there. You laughed at that. And, and, uh, and, and so I tried to get up and I fell down. And uh, a sweet, I don't know what she looks like, but an Indian lady came up to, oh, no, 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 don't get up. No, 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 go, no, 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 no. And she said, sweet lady, I'm so indebted. I wish I knew who she was. I called 911 and then she said this, help is on the way. I wish I could meet your needs today. But I know I can't meet them all, but I know a God that can. God wants to help you. I wonder what you're facing in life and maybe nothing. Maybe, I love what you said about yesterday, but I don't know about tomorrow. God's gonna be there for you. Well, you don't sense he's there. And you're gonna to learn to walk by faith. 
You're going to learn that the Spirit of God is going to bring comfort to your heart. Oh, there may be tears. There may be sorrows. There may be agony. It may be your whole world's turned upside down. But God is still God. My Bible saw that fear not tomorrow. I just want to speak on this one word today. Help. Help. He said here, I, verse 10, I will, pardon me, I will help thee. Look at verse number 13. I will help thee. In verse number 14, I will help thee when you're shattered, when you're broken, when you're discouraged. Now my job is to, verse 10, fear not. My job is don't be dismayed. Dismayed is shattered and broken and terrified. But God's job is I'm God. God's job is I will strengthen you. God's job, I will uphold you. God's job, I will help you. God wants to help you. God wants to help me. Let's start this way. Who can I help? Not so much can God help me. We know he can. But who can I help? I want to leave here and I want to release God's people from this auditorium in a few moments. And we're going to look for opportunities all this week to help somebody. If I can help somebody as I travel on. The joy of life is not to be helped as much as to be helped. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And the joy is not looking for help. The joy is giving help on the journey of life. I think of Mark chapter number nine, and that father came to Jesus. We were there a few weeks ago, and his son, the Bible said, he was demon possessed. He threw himself in the fire. He, he, he would hurt himself, and he was, the devil was controlling his life. And Jesus came and brought his, the Bible's lunatic son with him, his crazy son with him. And, and he said to Jesus, this is my son. And then he said this, will you, Help us. I wonder, Dad, I wonder, I wonder what dad or what mother today can help a child on the pathway of life. Uh, your son needs your help. Don't be absent. He needs your aid. He needs your support. He needs your instruction. A son, a daughter, she needs her mother. She needs her father. She needs her parents. She needs her family. And I want to say that here's a dad saying, Jesus, will you help us? I think secondly of a wife. It's found two times in the Bible. Genesis chapter 2 or both of them. God saw there was not a help meet for Adam. Your very title, ladies, as a wife is to be a help meet. Not necessarily help mate, but you meet the need. The word meet means the aid or to come alongside or support, just like the word help. You're a help need. You meet the needs. You're a help mate. You come to along and aid. At the very best, your husband is weak. And that includes all of us. He doesn't need a mother. Try that one more time. He doesn't need a mother. He doesn't need a babysitter. Ladies would say amen to that. But he does need a help meet. Men, you're very foolish if you don't listen to your wife. I'm not saying she's sitting you down now, oh, little Jackie boy, I want to teach you a few things about life. I want to instruct you. You're very foolish not to listen though, fellas. She has a view on things. She can see some things maybe that you cannot. However, on the same point, ladies, you're not there to boss him. You're not there to dominate him. Your job is like the Holy Spirit. It means to help me come alongside and bring aid to that husband. If there's someone that needs to believe in that husband, not in his sin, not in his corruption, not in his mood swings, not in his bipolar, whatever you want to call it, but if there's somebody that needs to come alongside and is in his corner, it's got to be his wife. It must be his wife. Here's a father representing parents. Let's help. Help parents and let's help. Listen to our parents. And parents, you send help and get help as this father went to go get help. And then may I say that a wife is a help meet. 
And then may I say, I love what it says over here in Job, but I marked my Bible 29, 12, because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. You know, fatherless children need help. Fatherless children need to get on a Sunday school bus and ride the Sunday school bus. Fatherless children need to have a bus captain that cares. Fatherless children need to have a, someone as a Sunday school teacher that cares for those fatherless children. We're living in a generation where our homes are fatherless. Dad's exempt. Dad's gone. Dad's exempting himself from this position of coming home after work and being with his kids and loving his kids and playing with his kids and praying with his kids and eating meals with his kids. And may I say that they're fatherless kids without a father. They need someone to come alongside and say, I'll be as a father. I'll be the Sunday school teacher that every morning in my life gets up and prays for little Bobby as he goes to school today and pray for little Kathy as she goes to school today and pray for their, their health and pray for their safety and pray for their education and pray for their home and pray for their mama or pray for whatever it may be in their life. You say, well, how do you find these fatherless ch children? They're everywhere. Look all around you. Find someone in need. Help. There's one word we're talking about today, help, and that's parents. Find help. Parents, give help. And then wife, help. Meet. And then the fathers, help. And for the sake of the time, the Bible says, I'll cut some of it out. Ecclesiastes 4.10, if thy friend falleth, help him. If someone falls around you, you, you don't need to kick them. One of the greatest presidents we ever had who messed up so bad was Richard Nixon. 49 years ago this past week, things began to start to unravel and then in August he resigned. He knew foreign affairs, they said, perhaps better than any other, any other president. He was a very smart man, and he had had all these different posts. And he never broke into Watergate, you know that story, but he lied about those that did. He did wrong, he lied to cover his people that had done wrong. And because of that, he's had to resign office. I kind of wish that we still had that in, in the last uh, 50 years. Got a lot of fellows that should have resigned. Past and present. Just throw that in for the sake of enjoyment. <laughs> By the way, because you're looking at me like that, let me just sp spend a moment on that. Because when a man no longer believes in righteousness and the destruction of a life and the destruction of a home, and spends his life on death of a child, and spends his life on a God-given right, he says, to have your son, age three and above, become a transvestite. Something's wrong because that's a violation of the word of God. I rest my case. I want to say, well, what about the vice president? We don't need that one either. Righteousness exalteth the nation. But sin is a reproach to anything. See, you can't talk about sin. I know, we'll be, we'll be edited. I know that. Sin's a reproach to any people. Amen. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. It starts with not we the government, we the people. Yeah. I'm glad I'm off on this, but you kind of scared me there with your little response a few moments ago. I'm talking about the fact I'm talking about the fact fathers and wives and fatherless and friend. I think in worldwide missions, Acts 16, come over to Macedonia and help us. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless way. Send the light. Who can I help? Well, find somebody. I just gave you a list. F find one of those folks to help, but here it is. And my message, and I'll be done. Where can I find help? I want to give as much help as I can this week. I want to give help to my mate.
to my children, to my family. I want to give help to the poor. I want to give help to the unsaved. I want to help people this week. If a brother falls, I want to help him. I don't want to kick him. Oh, we kicked, we, we kicked uh, uh, Mr. Nixon when he was down. We kicked him and, and would make fun of him. By the way, that was a Republican. Mr. Carter was a Democrat, and we hurt him too. He was a peanut farmer. And cartoons, first time, they start really in a major way, began to draw pictures of the president's face as a peanut. That's disrespectful. I'm not just talking about one group. Sounds like both groups up there have a problem. But there's people to help. Oh, how we need to help on this journey called life. I think of how secret that Washington, D.C. must be. And yet it is a crime infested place and abortion place and lawless place and defund the police place except for where they're at. I stood in that beautiful, beautiful place where the president gives the State of the Union address. And the Speaker of the House right behind, and I, so I stood in that pulpit. And I saw those seats that were there in that chamber and had prayer to open up Congress that day. It was such an awe-inspiring moment. But I want to say, it should not just be a prayer. It should be a way of life in Washington, D.C., and in Sacramento, and in my church, and in your church, and in my life, and in your life. There are plenty of places to find help this week. To do your best to help people. I help our president every day. He's on my prayer list. And his wife is on my prayer list. I don't like what he stands for, but I would not want any ill to happen to him. I would not want anybody to take his life. I don't want things to be true of crimes or anything. I don't want them to be true. When Mr. Clinton told us that he wasn't guilty of this and we found out he was, I did not want for his wife and for his daughter at the time was at Stanford right here. I did not want it to be true. I didn't like what he stood for. But I, I've been guilty of praying for him. I still have Mr. Bush on my prayer list. I still have Mr. Obama on my prayer list. Uh, these people that are still alive, they're still with us. I want their safety. I want their health. I want God to minister their need. I want God to bring them to himself. I can help the president by praying for him. I can help this nation by praying. I can help the bus ministry giving funds to that bus. I can help the college. I'm the president of club member as many of you are. I can help the Christian schools we give the students scholarship. I can help the radio ministry and the live stream as they give to it, as they pray over it. And so can you find opportunities this week. But where do I get help? Well, I'll tell you one place I get help. Psalm 40. The Bible says this. It says, send help, Psalm 20. Send help from the sanctuary. I get so much help coming to church. Amen. Why is it when we have the bad news and the sorrow and the disappointment and the son becomes a prodigal, the daughter becomes a prodigal, or there's grief in our heart, the thing, we're, I'm not going to church. Why would we deny the place that Jesus gave his life for the church? What we need more in America today is not less church. We need more church. Hebrews 10 saying, as we see the day approaching, so much the more. And she says, well, my son didn't turn out right. Well, so what's that have to do with the church? What's the church's fault? Don't start that victim mentality. Yeah, well, the, the church is dishonest. The church is this. The church is that. Well, what place is not affected by sin? 
We were talking this morning about a police officer that, 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 that apparently they did wrong in our area, and I don't know what it was, can't remember. Guess what, there are preachers that do wrong too. And there are Christians that do wrong. And there's businessmen that do wrong. And there's women that do wrong. I would not suggest you quit your job over somebody around you that did wrong necessarily. I'm talking about the fact that why would you quit church? Well, a bunch of hypocrites at that, at that church. What are we supposed to have? We want hypocrites to come. We want people that, that are unsaved to come. We want th thieves and robbers and liars to come to the house of God. I get help from the sanctuary. I get help when I hear that choir sing. I get help when I hear this orchestra play. I get help when, when the trio sang this morning, Fear Not Tomorrow. I get help by Brother Dan when you sang that song. And I knew, I saw on that card uh, on Friday, does Dan come to church or is he just singing and leave? Where's Dan at? Tell you. You're not in your spot, Brother Dan. He, uh, right there, you, what are you doing over there? Some folks are backsliding. Let's get right, right, right now. You don't ever sit there. You always sit there. Mopi, you always sit there. You got, would you switch right now? Uh, it's okay. Uh, I, I, I tell you what, I saw you singing that. It thrilled my heart. I want to say, I get help from this. I got help from your prayer. To think how you outlined that, that, that everything, the, the music and your Sunday school lesson and our church service today, and God already put it all together, orchestrated it, and we didn't even plan it. I get help when I walk in the sanctuary and I said, Brother Cooper, after Sunday school, what kind of day? He goes, my, we had a great day. He told me the number of visitors and things that were happening. I get help from that. I get help from the fact that, that though I miss greatly Brother Martinez today, he and I like a hand in the glove, I get help watching this man coming up here and leading the music and it was great. I get help watching the deaf ministry down here this morning. I get help looking at the college students and the high school students. I get help watching those buses come in and out this morning just driving up here and the shuttle buses. I want to tell you something. Church is great. So I, I, I'm so down. I, I think I'll stay home. Why? When you need help, get to church. You know where else I get help? I get help from the Bible. Thy testimonies, Psalm 119, are my help. And so I read the Bible, I get nothing from it. Well, just keep reading. Just keep reading. I love the old Bible, the precious old Bible. I want to stand on the promises. And sometimes when there's a difficulty through the day, I try to claim a promise from God's word. I claimed so often in the last couple of years, Isaiah 41, 41, 10, 10, be not dismayed. I'm with thee. I'm thy God. He's not going to forsake you, friend. He's not going to leave you. That scripture has given me so much hope. Fear not. I will help thee. And I've cried out so much to God. I need help. I think of when I was in Bible college. I, God gave me Psalm, my freshman year, Psalm 12, 1, help, Lord. I'd go to a class and not comprehend what they were teaching. I said, Lord, help me. I'd take an examination and they gave me things that I'd never seen in my life. And it was on the subject that they had taught. I don't know where they were, where I was, but I said, Lord, help me. And if I've studied it and learned it, bring it back to my memory, please. Help me. I prayed so much this morning, I get up early. I want God to help me to be a good husband, a good father, a good grandfather. I want God to help me be a good person, a good Christian. I want God to help me be a good pastor. Help me, God. I get help from the Word of God. I get help from the house of God. I get help from our God. I will lift up my eyes, Psalm 121, unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? I wonder why God says look to the hills because don't look down here. Start looking this way. You're going the right direction because the next verse says, my help cometh from the Lord. Amen. My help comes from God. God will help you. 
Sometimes it's a still, small voice. Sometimes it's an answer to prayer. And sometimes God's just quiet. I know you're going to think I'm spoiled, and I know I am. But really, for years, I always fuel my wife's car. That's nobody's job. But I've driven church cars. But I never look to gas the thing. And oh, probably about 15 years ago, I, I had a newer car. I think it was an Oldsmobile. Maybe 20 years ago now, and I was driving. I never, I didn't even know where the gas gauge was. I started driving. And I looked down, and I heard this pinging noise. And it, it was out of gasoline. It just out of gasoline. I was on Pacheco, not yeah, Pacheco Pass. And you know, right before you get to I-5, there's a Union 76 station there, but I didn't know that. And I'm just driving, you know what I'm talking about. And I, I'm just driving and saying, now Lord, I don't know where the next gas station is, but I'm gonna run out of gasoline. And you know, I said, Lord, would you help me? I wish I could say it happens this way all the time. And I came up over that knoll and I saw Union 76. God help me. God helps me when I don't know what to say. God helps me to keep my mouth shut when I want to open it. God wants to help you today. He wants to help in your sorrow, in your sadness, in your loneliness, in your heartache, in your world that's come upside down. And I want you to know that as you get older in life, Brother Tully, this is true, you get older in life, the whole world's upside down all the time. And everything you give your life to, it seems like it's falling apart as the songwriter sang, uh, wrote, wrote, you're not the first to be acquainted with sorrow, grief, and pain. Oh yes, so much that 46 years ago that we came here, I had planned that this would be this and this and this and this, and it's just the opposite. Didn't turn out like a lot of it, what I thought would, how I prayed, but God is still on the throne. Amen. He says, Jack, I wanna help you. I get help from the Bible. I get help from the house of God. I get help from God Almighty. I like what it says over here in Hosea chapter 13, verse number nine. A preacher from the East Coast texted me this this morning. I said, you won't believe it. That's in my message today. The Bible says in, 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 in that text that God is always our help. He said, in me, in me, God is my help. I want to close and say, you know where else I get help? Yes, God's house. Yes, God's word. And yes, God Almighty, but the avenue called prayer. You know the scripture, in Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, God says, come boldly, Jack, to the throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. I'll help you. I'll help you. I prayed for some things. I, I look at my prayer journal. All these years, there are some things that are still not answered. All these years later, God hasn't answered it. I don't know why, but God's not wrong. But I look back at all the things that God has answered. Do you realize that you're sitting on a property that we were repeatedly told you cannot buy it? And then the city said, if you do buy it, we will not allow you to build upon it. And do you realize that not only did the academic building get remodeled and additions put onto it, and they said you cannot build that dormitory. But not only is there one dormitory, but there's two now built three story. Amen. And the city has given us the final inspection on that. And there's a bus garage maintenance facility that is approved and it's on there and it's been working. And one day I came to this city and said, we wanna build a 3,000 seat auditorium. They said, you can't do it. You don't have enough parking. But we are here legally with a final inspection in a 3,000 seat auditorium. Why? Because God, God answered prayer. I recall those days of walking around this property 
in the weeds before there were roads and curbs and gutters and fire hydrants. And we'd walk around and get stickers in our socks. And we treat it like Jericho. In fact, we named the buildings around here Jericho and Ai and Gilgal and Shikam and all these buildings around here so that when they fall into our care, and we already have designs for the corner building here and across the street, and the architects are drawing, we're drawing what it's going to look like, and a bridge over the road. Say, when's it coming? Well, I don't know when it's coming, but I know I can keep asking because God says, I'll give you help. I want to come to your aid. I want to come and support you. I, I want to come and assist you with 911. I asked Brother Ethan, and I'd play it today. It's a minute and a half, but I don't have time. But we had a music group in our college several years ago record a song, Help is on the way. Help is on the way. I've been playing that in my car. These newer cars don't have CD players, but this one I drive does. I just play it, help is on the way. Help is on the way. I just believe God wants to help me. <clears throat> I just believe that, that I, I can come boldly to the throne of grace. I, God doesn't give me help on my timetable. He has a perfect timetable. And I want to thank you for being in church today because I get so much help. That first song that we sang, those three stanzas, listening to you sang, I got such help from that listening to you. You know, that second song that we sang, three or four stanzas, I, God helped me with that today. God helps me with church. God helps me with this book. God helps me through prayer. God helps me through God's people. And I want to be one that gives help. But I tell you what, I need help. And God says, Jack, I have it for you. There's one word I want to leave with you today. <laughs> it's the word help. Help. So here I am as a freshman in the Midwest, 1969 at Bible College. I had my draft notice and that kept showing up and I'm going to draft you for Vietnam. And somehow, God let me stay in Bible college. And I'd have hard days. I had days where I worked in the parts house at the auto parts store. I mopped floors. And in the midnight hour, I'd be mopping those floors and those hallways of that old building saying, help, Lord. Will you help me tonight? Will you help me? I stay up after work. I've got to study tonight. I need to study. I drove cars up and down the state. I drove them up here in Wisconsin. And then I got another car and left that one there and drove another car back. I had so many different jobs because sometimes the draw, jobs would dry up. But I want you to know this. God helped me every time. And God wants to help you. You're going to have to go to the right source. This week was no different. I've heard stories of drug overdose this week. I've heard stories of marital problems this week. I've heard stories of sons and daughters that break the parents' heart this week. I've heard stories of disloyalty and betrayal this week. But can I tell you, I came to church today. I've been helped. Early in the morning, long before sunrise, I get up and I get help from that Bible. I get help from God Almighty. I get help from singing. God wants to give you help. Let's stand together, shall we? Our Father, today I, I thank you for 911, that we can call that number and get help Police will come, fire will come, ambulance will come. Thank you for those we call our first responders. And Lord, I thank you for the very first responder that we have, an almighty God that wants to help us. Lord, return to thee for help. 
Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here without Christ today, God wants to save your soul. God wants to show you eternal life. In a moment, the pianist will play, and we always give an invitation while he plays. People come forward. Men, if you want to come and get saved and know that heaven's your home, a man will show you from the Bible within a few moments. We'll not embarrass you. We will not ask you to say anything. We will not have you come to the pulpit. You just get saved. Trust Christ. Or ladies with a lady. You're here with some heavy burden today. I think of a young girl who came to Bible college several years ago and day one as a freshman, she got word that her dad walked out of their life. Oh, a lot of sorrow in this world. And she graduated and married and she's living for God. You need help. Let's have you come as the pianist plays. All over the house where you come. <clears throat> come just like you are. But that thy blood was shed for me. Get help from God. You need help today. Your finances, I don't know. He'll maybe give you the wisdom to get another job and have two jobs. I don't know what it's going to mean. But you're not going to make it with, in life without help from God. And don't just have him be your 911. Go to him when you don't need a 911. I held my phone down too long this week and I was with my wife and all of a sudden it gave that sound and it was a red line and it said uh, emergency and I dialed 911. I got it disconnected immediately. I don't need 911 in this city every single day of my life. I've had to use it a few times. But I tell you what, God gives a lot of great days. But I don't know what tomorrow holds. But I do know this, I'm going to try to help people today and this week. I'm going to do my best to help people. Whether they, they are ripping me off, or I want to try to help people. I'm not only going to try to help people, but I'm going to go to the source of help, the scriptures, the house of God, God Almighty, the people of God, the songs of God. Father, I thank you for help, support, aid to come alongside. I thank you I can call upon the Holy Spirit to help me. I can go to prayer and find help in the time of need. I pray that we cry out to thee for help this week. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Folks are still praying. Sir, if you died right now, would you go to heaven or hell or don't you know? Where will you spend eternity? Dear lady, if you died right now, would you come? Would you come right now? Come to God. If you're here to follow the Lord and believers' baptism, you're here to unite with this church, would you come right now? Father, bless these dear, dear people. How I thank you for them. I thank you for their faithfulness. Every Sunday morning, this place is filled. I thank you for the other buildings that are filled this hour on this property. The other property is jam-packed. And there's a hunger in the Silicon Valley for the Word of God. I do pray for our dear preacher friends today that are needing help, our dear missionaries that need help. I pray that you send help in this great time of need. In Jesus' name, amen.